How to Increasing Your Magnetism Extracts from Lectures by Paramahansa Yogananda in 1940 Thought is Infinite Whatever your branch of study, once you have put your mind on a particular subject, your thought can go on indefinitely in that direction. There is no end to the wisdom or information you can draw upon. Do you know that each one of you is interpreting what I am saying in a slightly different way? Each person experiences a mental process that differs from everyone else's. What is that mental process? Suppose someone pinches you. First you feel a physical sensation. From the stimuli of the sensation comes perception. Then, having perceived the sensation, your mind forms the thought, I have been pinched. That is conception. The process from sensation to perception to conception is an individualized response. Because the inner being and working of each person is unique, the sum total of his reactions to any given experience will be different from that of any other person's. This totality of what you are inside, your thoughts, feelings, responses, motivations, determines the quality of your magnetism, your power of attraction. Magnetism is the greatest force through which you can draw unto yourself friends and goodwill. We all like to be noticed, no one wants to feel ignored or forgotten. Even a child will deliberately act up to get attention. We also like to be thought well of, we want others to like us. But how many of us give to others the understanding and consideration we think we merit from them? We express the greatest compassion and forgiveness toward our own weaknesses, while all too readily we criticize and condemn others for their faults. Can we as easily stand up before others and tell all our own faults since childhood? No. But unless we learn to behave, we can't show others how to behave, and have no right to be intolerant of their shortcomings. The world is full of those who want to reform others, but not themselves. Unless we develop a constructive critical estimate of ourselves, we will go on year after year unchanged. What is important is self-reform, for if we ourselves have reformed, we shall reform thousands by our example. Example does speak louder than words. Begin by being kind to all. How to become a king of hearts, loved by all. Become more saintly, so that like a true king you sit on the throne of love in the hearts of others. Begin by being kind to all. Unkindness is a spiritual disease. If you indulge in unkind acts and feelings, you make yourself miserable and damage your nervous system. When you see others behaving unkindly, it should give you greater determination to be kind. I practice this all the time. No matter how hurtfully others behave, they cannot make me react with meanness. The more unkindness people show to me, the more understanding I give to them. Sometimes, in order to stress an important lesson, I speak very strongly to those who have come to me for training. But I am never angry or unkind. Those who receive such discipline have seen that at the height of the scolding, when I seem to be most displeased, I can shut off fiery speech and use the gentlest of words. That self-control has tremendous power. Never allow your voice to be harsh out of anger or vengefulness. Like a flower, shed petals of kindness when you are aggravated by others or attacked by the evil in them. By self-control and right behavior you will ultimately realize that you are a part of the eternal good, you do not belong anymore to the wrong ways of this world. 
The inner self must be cultivated. To be truly attractive, you must be attractive mentally and spiritually as well as physically. The present generation links attractiveness to the style shops and beauty parlors. But beauty has to be more than external. You can be looking at the most handsome man and the most beautiful woman in the world, yet right beneath their pleasing appearance you may discover much hidden ugliness. They are like the magnificent sarcophagi from the tombs of ancient Egypt, how beautiful, how perfect the carved images look. But when you lift the cover, you find nothing beautiful in the dead form within. If the spiritual qualities of our true soul nature are dead, an attractive physical body is little more than a casket to hold the inner withered consciousness. It is fortunate, of course, that some physical attractiveness covers the ugliness of our bones, sinews, and internal organs. But why be so preoccupied year after year in adorning only the outer form? America seems very much a place where people concentrate on keeping up their outer image in order to hide their age. I have seen many people looking 40 who were really 60. And that is good. Why shouldn't you keep the body fit and attractive? You can make your body whatever you want it to be. Why be careless and let it go to pot, as they say? Watch your weight. If your form is disproportionate, it is most likely because of laziness or overeating. Some people diet or fast one day, and then more than make up for it the next day. Get plenty of exercise and learn to be more careful about what you eat. But such are the infinite potentials of life, so much to learn and to do, that if you are primarily intent on enhancing your physical being, you won't have time to do anything to improve yourself inwardly. Beautifying oneself before the mirror, painting the face, coloring the hair, may help one to be noticed in the business or social world, and there is nothing wrong with that, but it will not improve the inner personality, the inner self. My point is that you have to give some time to the inner self also. In the East, the concentration is mostly upon inner attractiveness, and in the West, more emphasis is placed on physical attractiveness. What is necessary is a combination of both. I would rather be mentally attractive than physically attractive. But if I can be both, that is even better. We must learn to simplify the externals of our life and take time to beautify our inner self. That is the way to develop true magnetism. You might be quite conscious of someone's homeliness, at first meeting, and then realize that his inner personality is very attractive and magnetic. Socrates was like that. So was Lincoln. They had a magnetism born of beautiful inner qualities that drew others to them. When you have that kind of divine attractiveness, the physical features are of less importance. Your physical appearance, especially the eyes, shows more or less what you were like in previous lives, so deeply does the inner being impinge on the outer form. The eyes are one's most significant physical feature. You should learn to make your eyes beautiful. How? The eyes clearly reflect what you are within. So there is but one method that can beautify the life and expression in the eyes, the inner cultivation of beautiful thoughts and feelings. Some eyes are very cruel, others are mean or selfish. No matter how sweet such a person's words or actions are, you can see what he is really like through the expression of the eyes. He cannot hide himself behind those open windows. So think wholesome thoughts, constructive thoughts. 
As a being privileged to be made in God's image, you have no right to disfigure your inner life. Develop peaceful eyes, calm eyes, strong eyes, divinely loving eyes, by cultivating these qualities within. By this method alone you can develop an inner attractiveness that completely transcends the limitations of physical appearance. Turn your trials into triumphs. It is never too late to improve oneself. Watch your thoughts, feelings, and actions, and guide them rightly. At the end of each day, analyze yourself, how have you lived this day? To be really living is to strive constantly to improve oneself, physically, mentally, morally, spiritually. A person who has not become stationary, but continues to change for the better, day after day, year after year, develops magnetism. Use every trial that comes to you as an opportunity to improve yourself. When you are passing through the difficulties and tests of life, you usually become rebellious. Why should this happen to me? Instead, you should think of every trial as a pickaxe with which to dig into the soil of your consciousness and release the fountain of spiritual strength that lies within. Each test should bring out the hidden power that is within you as a child of God, made in His image. Our tests are not meant to destroy us. Only those who are cowards, and who don't acknowledge the all-perfect image of God within, become rebellious and surrender to their trials as though those tests were unconquerable destructive forces. It is an injustice to your potential as a human being to so regard your tests. The right attitude is to use each trial as a stimulus to strengthen your inner self. If the wrestler doesn't fight with stronger opponents, he will not become stronger himself. So when you face all your difficulties bravely, with spiritual strength, you become even stronger and more powerful. By conquering when you are tested, you will revive the forgotten image of God within you, and become consciously one with the Father again. So we must remember to use our God-given strength to overcome our trials, and thereby strengthen our inner lives. That divine inner strength is the source of our magnetism. The power of good company and deep attention. Another help toward developing your magnetism is deep attention, by this power you can draw on others' magnetism. Learn to put your full attention on everything you do. Whenever you are with someone, be a good listener. By attentiveness, tune in with people who have those attractive qualities you wish to develop. If you want strength, mix with those who are strong. If you want to develop your business sense, be with businessmen. If you want to develop all-powerful divine magnetism, mix with those who love God. You will develop much faster this way than if you merely read books on these subjects. Saints and others who have accomplished much in this world have had great magnetism. By thinking deeply of great men you can receive their vibrations. Ordinarily, we receive knowledge through the senses of sight and hearing, by reading books or listening to discourses. But greater than these is direct contact with a man of wisdom. You gain knowledge much quicker through such association. Even if that great soul lives 10,000 miles away from you, if you think of him and concentrate on him with deep attention, you can receive his vibrations. You will begin to get something that is beyond mere words, you can receive another's magnetism through the mental channel of thought. Krishna, Buddha, Jesus, these great ones manifested the highest quality of magnetism. Every time I see an image of one of the great ones, or think of them, I get their vibrations. 
When I contact Jesus I feel the consciousness of God as the Father. When I think of Ram Prasad, I feel the vibration of God as the Mother. This attunement with Divine Ones does not come about merely by thinking of them for a few moments. It is only by meditating day after day on a great saint that you will begin to receive the spiritual vibrations of that saint. There is also great value in visiting places where saints have lived. Assisi, the abode of Saint Francis, Bodh Gaya, where Buddha attained enlightenment, Jerusalem, where Jesus preached, such places are forever permeated with the vibrations left there by the divine souls who walked those grounds. Their vibrations will remain until this earth is dissolved. Where souls have communed with God, there you will find greater communion and response from God. Often such pilgrimages completely change one's life for the better. Direct association with a God-realized man of wisdom may be through personal contact or deep meditation. The important point is to attune your consciousness with His. When you are in tune with a great soul who loves God, that attunement gradually changes your life in a most wonderful way. Your will does not become enslaved, it becomes expanded. This is the difference between attunement to an ego-centered person and being in tune with a true guru. The magnetism of a God-realized soul will put you in tune with the magnetism of God. God is the supreme magnetic force. Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all things will be added unto you. God is the supreme power behind all powers, the supreme love behind all loves, the supreme artist behind all art. When you put your mind on God, the supreme magnetic force, you surcharge yourself with divine magnetism, and you can attract unto yourself all things. If you think of God in deepest meditation, if you love Him with all your heart, and feel completely at peace in His presence, without wishing for anything else, the divine magnetism of God will attract unto you everything you ever dreamed about, and much more. In every department of my life I have demonstrated this truth, if you love God for His own self, not because of what He can give you, and if you are completely attracted by His divine magnetism, that power from him goes out of your own heart and mind, and by your slightest little wish, you will attract unto yourself the fulfillment of that desire. If you have unconditional love for God, he drops thoughts in others' brains, and they become instruments to fulfill even your unspoken desires. So divine magnetism, by which you can attract anything unto yourself, is the kind of attractiveness you want to develop. Always desire that which is good, that which is noble, that which is pure. Then, as a divine man, filled with the magnetism of God, you can never fail to attract anything you want. Meditate deeply, and send forth the call of your soul to God, Lord, thou must come into my body temple. Whether it is broken by disease, old age, or other imperfection doesn't matter. Whatever the condition of my temple, I know thou wilt enter it as soon as thou knowest I truly love thee and I know that thou dost love me. When this realization comes, the body that was so dear to you does not mean that much to you anymore, you want to give more importance to your inner life than to vain material pursuits. The divine man who loves God more than self finds that the attractiveness within himself is God, he then loses his attachment to the gross body, O oh Lord, whether my body walks the pathways of earth singing thy name, or falls asleep in the ocean of death, I am ever with thee. Life and death may sing their songs, but I am one with the song of eternity. I cannot die for I am the breath of eternal life. 
Now, please pray with me, Father, I have thrown off all negative thoughts. I was bound by the iron chains of materialism, but thy magnetic presence is changing me, I realize I am made in thine image. I am a divine magnet. Thy magnetic current flows through my hands, the magnetism of thy wisdom flows through my brain, the magnetism of thy love through my heart, the magnetism of thy joy through my soul. Aum, peace, amen. Excerpts from the book Journey to Self-Realization by Paramahansa Yogananda